Another episode of Spec Talk Down. So let's talk about some of the harder to find books that no one really shed some light on. So I have a soft spot for these prototype books, especially as of recently. Basically, we see an instant where like Jack Kirby works for DC Comics and tells a story in Challenges the Unknown, where four astronauts go into space, get ready to come down with fantastic powers. A year later, Kirby and Lee would drop Fantasy Four number one over at Marvel, and that's kind of the gist of it. Uh, not always same creators, not always same publishers, uh, but you can see the roadmap that leads us to some of the most iconic characters today. So let's start us off. Superboy number 49 of 1956, it is kind of the prototype of Metallo, normally Metallo is a foe for Superman, but in Superboy 49, Metallo is a Kryptonian robot who helps Superboy and goes on to never show up again. Uh, this is really only sort of a prototype, considering it's, he's only Metallo by name and not concept, but it's a much easier book to find than Action 252. A 6-0 or less will cost you about really less than 300 bucks, and raw copies range from 140 down to 30 bucks, depending on grade. Definitely uh, a relatively cheap book for its age, and it's one that, you know, maybe when you're going through the bins over at the flea markets or your local comic shop, kind of keep in the back of your mind. It's just something neat to uh, keep an eye out for. One that's definitely a lot more of a prototype, Chambers of Darkness number four. Here's not only, you know, one people don't really talk about, but Marvel was on the fence about picking up the Conan IP back in the 70s. So to test the water for the Barbarian, Marvel created Star the Slayer. Later that year, I guess Marvel was happy with Star and decided to launch the first Conan title. Uh, your local comic shops probably have this one for 30 bucks or less, uh, considering it's a book that seems no one cares about. No one really talks about this one a whole lot, and it's a lot cheaper than a Conan one. According to GPA, a 9.6 for this book is about $300, round it up, uh, but it's called $300 even. Uh, on the flip side, a Conan one at a 9.6 is closer to four grand. So don't get me wrong. That's the better book to have. You know, Conan 1 will always be the quintessential Conan book to have. But, you know, if you're on a different budget, a 92.5% decrease doesn't sound too bad. And if you wanted a Conan number 1 for the same price at a, uh, a 6.5, would fit your budget a little bit better. And honestly, if you ask me, I think a, even a 6.5 is, is, isn't going to have a lot more room to, to, to grow. Uh, for the Conan book, but might even be, still be a better buy than Chamber of Darkness number four. But I wouldn't say go hunting for your, that 9.6 copy. You know, maybe try and find a, a, a mid-grade, mid-to-high-grade raw copy for that $30 range at your LCS. It's a lot cheaper than you're going to find a, uh, a Conan 1 at your LCS for in, in almost any grade. But years later, Star the Slayer would get his own miniseries as well in the Marvel Max line. And today, you can also find those in dollar bins. But, you know, it's one of those low print books that is probably worth keeping an eye out for in case you find it. For Supergirl, she's got two different prototypes that predate Action 252. The first one was back in 1949 in Superboy number 5. It's definitely a tough book to find. But if you do, the story basically follows soon to be Queen Lucy. She's been rolling in uh, Superboy school in Smallville. And she dawns inside of Supergirl. After the events of the issue, she hangs up the title and becomes queen of her people in uh, Borgania. Uh, a couple years later, a couple years ago, a 9-4 somehow came up for auction for this book. And it sold for over $19,000. But you're not going to find a 9-4 out there probably at all. And if you do, I, I don't know if that's where I would put $19,000. Don't be me wrong. Uh, but even at a 5-5 five, five in more recent times, it has uh, been selling for a little bit over 1000 bucks. It's not a book you're probably going to find anytime soon really in any grade. But it's worth knowing about because you never know what you'll find in the wild. Maybe going through the flea market. Maybe your LCS gets a collection in. Who knows? But it's just kind of a neat book. The other book to talk about here is Superman 123, which would debut a year before Kara would, and uh, where Jimmy Olsen uh, wishes on a magical totem for a companion for Superman. She ends up getting in the way before she begins to die from Kryptonian poison or Kryptonite poisoning. Uh, so Jimmy just wishes her back away. Uh, it seems a buck fifty can get you anywhere from a point five to a three five, depending on when you pull the trigger. And, uh, you know, this is a book you're looking for. It's worth taking your time to find the right copy for the right price. Because, you know, as you can see, a 0.5 and a 3.5 sold for the same price. One's raw, one's graded, and roughly the same time frame. So it's probably better off for that guy to wait, jump on the 0.5. Uh, but if you're considering, you can find a, a no, if you're considering using that price, you can barely get a no grade for the 252 for the same value. So, you know, if you landed at 3.5, that's not the worst alternative. 
Marvel Tales 116 is a classic, classic Atlas title. It is home to a lot of iconic horror issues, but 116 is home to a story titled Werewolf by Night. It's the first time that title was ever used, especially by Marvel. And uh, it's unconnected to a character we would get to know uh, two decades later, but it's an amazing cover. Definitely one of my favorite werewolf covers, especially of that era. Um, and possibly of all time, because it's, it's a great cover. Uh, and the, the interiors are pretty good. The story's not too bad. I mean, it's, it's an overall, it's a good comic. It's it's super iconic for what it is. Uh, it's another one that doesn't come up very often, uh, and I'm a pre, pre uh, big pre code horror fan, so that, you know those could always be tough. And I'm sure this is one that everyone's probably on the lookout for, even if they don't mean to be looking for. If you see it, not even said people are like, oh, that's cool. It's you know, especially if you're a horror fan, if you're pre code fan, comic fan. GPA and eBay solds are kind of all over the place, so if this one's tough to land a right price on. Uh, but if you find one, do your due diligence to get a good price. And, uh, you know, if you can manage to find one and it seems like the price is right and, you know, you did your, your, your bit of research, might not, might be worth pulling the trigger on. You never know. Tales of Suspense number 35 is the first appearance of Zarkar, or uh, he's basically like a, a watcher prototype. Zarkar is, you know, he's a, a pilot who disguises himself as an all-seeing alien. Uh, he's sort of like the Wizard of Oz with the Outer Limits twist. Uh, recent copies sell online for 80 bucks or higher raw and a 4 sold sold uh, off a of best offer um, for for relatively cheap for what it is. But, you know, presentable low grades seem to sell around 100 bucks raw or graded. Doesn't really matter. And uh, comparable recent solds on a 3.5 on this book is about a third of the price of the first watcher at that same low grade mark, which feels about right where it should be. I think a lot of these prototypes shouldn't nearly be worth as much as the true first appearances, but they're definitely, I think a lot of them are extremely undervalued, but this one seems to be right where it's at, and it's still a very affordable price range. Comic Magazine number one, good luck finding this one, because uh, it came out in 1936, and is labeled as the prototype of Clark Kent, often referred to as the first superhero, Siegel and Schuster, or sort of superheroes, depending on your definition of the term. But a raw copy online is currently listed for a $35,000 ask price. It's insane. Uh, historical sales can range anywhere uh, from a $0.5 and $1,500 sale to a 9 selling for a whopping $38,000 in 2017. So comparing this to the 2014 pricing of National Comics 1, uh, it's kind of a joke, to be honest with you. I don't know why you'd ever compare these two books. Because the actual one is way more iconic and just, all, you know, also impossible to find. But if you wanted to compare the two uh, in, in 2014, and actually I was one of the same pro same grade, sold for $3 million, um, over 8,000% change. And uh, it's kind of a joke there. But uh, either way, it's still an expensive historical book. It's one that you'll probably never see. I I've never seen a copy. And you may never see it in the wild or at all. Uh, it doesn't really come up for auction very often. And it's not a book I see a lot of people ever really talk about. But it's an interesting book to know just for your, your historical comic knowledge overall. And it's just, it's a big piece of history. Tale of Spence 16 is a lot more affordable than the comic uh, magazine number one. But it's kind of like a Metallo book where here Marvel makes their own Metallo. Uh, this later, later retooled into Tony Stark Iron Man. A convict learns about a suit of armor impervious to radiation. He volunteers to be a test subject and breaks out of prison with the suit, as you would. Uh, the convict goes on a crime spree. He ends up trying to free some other prisoners from Alcatraz before he, become, he ends up falling ill. He heads to the infirmary where the doctors tell him that the only treatment would be with radiation. And so he flees to the desert to consider his options. Kind of... It's another one of those, like, Outer Limits, ironic, you know, twists at the end there. Uh, you know, it's, it's Super 60s. But you can definitely see where the design of Metallo would later be retooled into the Mark 1 two years later in the same, uh, in the same run. But uh, rec recently, two decent copies sold for about 150 and a 3.0 went for 230 uh, that seems extremely undervalued for a book like this. Maybe I'm a little bit biased to the prototypes, but it can vary prices at a last little of 3 0 uh, for a, a Tales 39. Uh, it's a 97.44 decrease to this book. So, you know, with that in mind, I think that is an extremely, extremely affordable book in comparison. And uh, it's definitely one I'm on the, on the hunt for. Again, a lot of these prototypes are quite older or they got low print runs like the hellboy or whatever that we'll get into in a minute but uh so they don't really come up too often and when they do you know a lot of, if you know what it is you'll probably snatch it up 
But it's always good to know because it, it can never hurt to know. You never know what you're going to find out there. Speaking of books, you'll never know if you're going to find. Mike Mignola debuted the prototype of his iconic Hellboy character in the Great Salt Lake Comic Con handout. Uh, later, Dime Press 4 would also showcase this rendition of Hellboy. What is a true prototype considering this was a basically directly the, the steps Mignola took to do Hellboy. So it really is like a true, true prototype. Uh, you really see the timeline break down from Great Lake Handout uh, to the preview in Dexman 14 and Dime Press 4 to finally his first true appearance in uh, San Diego Comic Con number 2, the comic they put out back then, and Dexman 21 for his first in color appearance. Uh, but the Salt Lake Handout doesn't come up very often, and uh, Dime Press 4 sells for around $500 as of recently. One was signed, one wasn't, but uh, an 8.0 or higher seems to sell for even more. And the book seems to be a little bit inflated just because of recent news on the reboot. But historic, historically, this book has been super expensive in the past. And really all of them are. I mean, the Great Lake one, you just really don't see it all. The San Diego Comic-Con one's usually about 200 bucks or more. Uh, the Next Men 21's usually 100 bucks or more. The Next Men 14's usually 20 bucks. You know, there are always books that kind of land at that that price range that are always kind of have their fans looking out for them. Hell Rider number one, a prototype of Ghost Rider a year prior to Marvel Spotlight number five. Bryce Reese uh, is a vigilante who tricks out his bike with a flamethrower, basically. This book, it, it's, it's pretty neat. And this book also houses the first appearance of a, the first ever black female superhero in comics, Butterfly, uh, which is really neat. It's a big part of uh, comic history, I think. Um, Gary Frederick would later go on to create Johnny Blaze with obvious connections there. Uh, recent sales range from a hundred bucks uh, to two hundred forty, and a uh, a nine two recently sold for four hundred dollars last year. And a Marvel Spotlight number five currently trends at nine k at the same grade. Uh, with a ninety five point five five percent drop off for a high grade copy like that seems ideal for the affordable book, especially considering it is a major part of comic history. Um, you know, again with the the prototypes just sort of neat with this one. It's a, it's one of those Marvel magazines that are kind of tough to find, but also being first appearance of Butterfly. You know, this is definitely a book that's worth keeping an eye out for in case you find it in those cheap bins. Maybe you'll find it for, you know, not, not everyone knows about this book. This is a book you guys talk about a lot. And a lot of times those magazines get overshadowed by shop owners or, you know, resellers or whatever have you. So, we're going to find that on the cheap if you stay hunting, stay busy. All right, last one on the list here. Two years prior to action number one, Magneto debuts in Strange Tales number 84. Uh, it's a Kirby story that follows a man mocked for his low IQ and large size. He ends up volunteering to be the first man into space. Uh, after passing through a radiation cloud, Magnador uh, returns to space with powers of magnetic objects. On the cover, he's referred to as Magneto, but inside the book they call Magnetor for some reason. Uh, he's also like brown and furry on the cover, and on the inside he's just like a, a, a large man, uh, which is really weird, really weird change there. Uh, but he, has, he causes havoc, so he just wants to find peace. And Hulk style, they sent him off to a planet where he can live in peace. It's kind of a kind of a neat story. It really has nothing to do with Magneto per se, but you can kind of see where Kirby started getting the inkling of the idea for Magneto. Um, and a 7.0 lands you at about $340 on GPA, but a 5.0 sold off eBay recently for $225. It's not bad for a 5.0. Recent Rawls go under 200 bucks, and at a uh, 5.0 range, the real Magneto number one sells for $16,800. As of January this year, that's an insane ninety-eight point six six decrease, um, and a two twenty-five is definitely a low entry fee for a book like this in comparison to it's a lot it's a lot more affordable uh, in comparison to its its bigger key. And I, I don't again I don't think it should be anywhere near as expensive as X Men One. X Men One is a major excuse me major book. Uh, it's first appearance of not only just Magneto but the X Men, and uh, it's just a massive title for just comics in general, Marvel. And uh, so I don't think this book should really be anywhere near what it is. But two twenty five uh, for a, a pretty neat book at a, a, a mid grade is uh, doesn't sound too bad, especially a book as old as it is. Um, but hey, you know you never know. There's I don't, I don't think anything's making any of these books spike anytime soon, and you know unless there's a, some record high sale. But again, I don't think any of these books are really going to spike. Um, but, uh, and I, I think they'll still slowly go up over time. And admittedly, I'm a big fan of these prototypes. Recently picking up the Spider-Man prototype. I don't know if you can see that on the wall back there. As I showed off my King Kong video, if you haven't checked it out, go check that out. Uh, and, uh, I also picked up the Phantasm 4-1, which is getting pressed and cleaned. And I'm following that as Liberty Slope with, uh, a few I'm really eyeing. And, you know, hey, 
what aren't I hunting expensive books, I guess. <laughs> but uh, so I figured I'd highlight some of these prototypes out there. Some, some that I feel like a lot of people don't showcase really ever. Don't go rushing to pick these up. Just wait for me to get my copies first. You know what I mean? But I hope you enjoyed. Check out the Facebook group fans at least for a poll going up today uh, for the next video. I'm dropping next Wednesday. I drop every Wednesday. So check that out and you can vote on what the next video will be. And for more daily content, follow me here on Facebook and Instagram. All linked down below. And until next time, peace.